We have four core concepts that makes object-oriented the most versatile programming paradigm. Abstraction, inheritance, encapsulation, polymorphism. The first one that we're going to talk about is abstraction. Abstraction is basically implementation hiding. Its main goal is to handle the complexity of the program by hiding the unnecessary details from the user. This enables the user to implement the more complex logic on top of the provided abstraction without understanding or even thinking about all the hidden complexity. Let's take for example the Grey Wizard Gandalf. He doesn't need to be an expert on the complex mechanical and electrical parts under the car's hood to be able to drive it. He just needs to learn how to use the steering wheel, pedals, and the stick. Here we have an example. The items in green are the complex concepts and processes that make a car what it is. The items in red are the things that a driver should know to be able to drive the car. We apply abstraction by moving the complexities to a separate entity so that our driver can focus on what's important, which is to drive the car. In another example, we have the main class. All the complex methods are defined inside it. To apply abstraction, we move all the functionalities related to database management to a separate class and call it database manager. All functionalities involving processing and preparation of data will be handled by a class called data controller. Our main class only has to communicate with the data controller and all the database tasks are hidden away from it. Abstraction keeps things simple while making a software reliable, manageable, and scalable in the long run. This leads us to the next core concept in object-oriented programming, which is inheritance. Inheritance is the implementation of the parent class to child class relationship. This is also the process of the child or subclass taking on the functionality of a parent or separate class. Inheritance is also known as generalization. In this class diagram, we have two classes, teacher and student. Notice that there are attributes and methods common between these two classes. Both have basic information and basic actions. They also have attributes and methods specific to them. The college attribute and the teach method is unique to the teacher class, while the course and section attributes are exclusive only to the student class. As the program expands, we may need other entities and these entities may share the commonalities. It will be very redundant if these attributes and methods are defined each time a new entity is created. To fix this, we will create a new class and call it person. All commonalities will be moved to this class. Using a notation, a solid line, block head arrow, we will establish a relationship between the person class and the two other classes. The arrow must start from the child class pointing towards the parent class. The child will inherit everything the parent class has. The teacher class inherits from person. We don't have to define these attributes inside teacher because they are already being inherited from the person class. The teacher will have all the attributes and methods of the person class. We'll do the same thing for the student class. So now, the student class is also a child of the person class. We don't have to define these attributes and methods because they are already inherited by the student from the person class. So now, we can focus on the attributes and methods that are important to the teacher class, attributes and methods important to the student class. All the basic data and actions are hidden in the person class. Any modification in the attributes and methods in the person class will be passed down to its children. This relationship is also known as inheritance or generalization. It can also be described using the verb extends. Teacher extends to person. Student extends to person. So now, if we are to add another entity that will have the same basic data and actions as the other two classes, all we have to do now is to simply extend to the person class. 
the Dean class will inherit all the attributes and methods from the person class. And we can now focus on what's important to this class. A child class can also have its own child. So we have a new class called class A. We're going to extend it to the teacher class. So now class A extends to teacher. Class A will inherit all the attributes and methods of person plus the attributes and methods of teacher. Class A is child of teacher, teacher is child of person. Another way to say it is class A is a subclass of teacher. Teacher is the base class of class A. And person is the super class because it's at the topmost of the hierarchy. One thing to note before we move on to the next topic is that in Java, multiple inheritance is not allowed. So this means a child can only extend to one parent class. Extending to more than one parent is not allowed in Java. So this is not valid in Java. 